You've tuned into the Tactical Frequency, a podcast centered around all things Falcon BMS. So this podcast, this is designed for people who are interested in flight sims, particularly those interested in the F-16 and air combat. I don't think this is really controversial at all, just to say the best way of learning Falcon BMS is through multiplayer. You really have to be flying with other pilots, particularly pilots that are better than you and have a greater understanding of how to fly, how to debrief. All of these things are very, very important. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Are you struggling in BVR? Do you need help with shooting an AIM-120? Well, this video is for you. I'll be going over the dy dynamic launch zone and other things that may help you improve your AIM-120 shots. This is part two of a multi-video series about dynamic launch zone, BVR, and other aspects of air-to-air -air combat. Let's get started. Overview going over energy management, HUD symbology, DLZ ranges, pre-launch, DMC on the HUD, pole ranges, and post-launch. Here we're going to talk about energy management. It is very important, especially in dogfighting and BVR, basically any any combat sense of a uh, of combat s simulators the higher you are the less drag your missile has to go through thus in theory making allowing the missile to go farther there are two types of termination criteria not high and nominal high is this an increase in the speed at calculated impact nominal is a slower speed than the above it doesn't mean it's super slow it just means that it's slower than high nom high termination criteria your energy so your speed and your height gives you energy. Generally, the more energy you have, it gets you in a better situation in BBR, usually is usually the case. So speed is also very important. AIM-120s like to go fast, but your speed makes it easier for them to get up to speed. If able, shoot above Mach to get above that, that sound barrier. So if you're already above Mach, the missile does not have to get above that sound barrier. And it increases the termination criteria, so it gives it a better chance of being a high instead of nominal. Altitude, if you're at 40,000 feet, it is thinner air, meaning less drag, increases termination criteria as well. If your bandit's down low, there's nothing you can do about that, but your missile will still have a decent speed to hit, or at least give them a something to think about. Here's some offensive HUD symbology. There's a lot of stuff here. So AIM-120 symbology, basically the HUD will be where your eyes spend most of the time. So it's important to know most of the information, if not all the information on the HUD. It gives you a ton of information for weapons employment. The DLZ, which is right here, I'll go over that in a minute. The allowable steering cue, Q, circle. The allowable steering error circle, which is this circle right here. So this is the amount of error that you could have based on your parameters at that moment in time. Larger the circle, the better the shot. As you see here, it goes through arrow, R opt, R pi, it gets big. And then as it gets closer to R min, it gets smaller. When it's flashing, it is at that R that R pi. The attack steering cue, which is this little circle here. So this circle needs to be inside of the steer the error circle, so you can have a better shot when it comes to angles uh, shooting the target that you're that you're locked onto. So if this circle's over here, you just need to move your aircraft and make sure it's inside of the circle. Target aspect angle is this little this little uh, arrow here. So this is the aspect of the target that you're locked onto. Right now they're hot, so they're facing towards you. It's at the 12 o'clock position. If they're running away from you, it'll be at the 6 o'clock position. And these two will be mean, means that it's beaming you. FCR radar range is something very important that you need to know on the HUD. It is this line right here. It's F027. So this F means it's FCR. That's the, ra the range that my FCR has given me, the fire control radar. Right now, I'm at 27.8 miles away from my lock target. And they're at 20,000 feet. I'm at 30,000 feet. So I got a little bit more energy than they do, especially at Mach point nine four so this is the good stuff here's the dlz also known as the dynamic launch zone because it's a zone that you can launch and it's dynamic based on different parameters so here are the ranges so this first range here it's our arrow this is range right here so this is the the maximum range that your missile can go aerodynamically if the target does not move this target range cue right here this little arrow as well this moves up and down also the dynamic launch zone will move up and down based on the parameters in that given time. So once your target range cue reaches our arrow, you are able to shoot, but it just means that your your missile can hit if the target doesn't move. Also, it assumes that you lofted the missile as well. 
and that would be nominal termination criteria. So it's, it's a decent shot. So next is R optimal, or R opt. But at this circle, once your range Q gets to this circle, there'll be a, a angle up here that you can shoot at that'll give you a better shot when it comes to your high termination criteria. So this is basically the same as R arrow, but with the high termination criteria and with that loft. So you'll be, you'll be a little bit closer than R arrow, so it's a little bit better of a shot. Range probability of in intercept, which is R pi. This is probably the, the best shot to take, in a, especially as a first shot, depending on the situation. So this is same as R opt, but you don't need to loft the missile anymore. This also assumes that the target is non-maneuvering. So it's not going to hit them because they're, they're going to turn around. This means if they keep going straight, then it'll hit. Range turn and run. This assumes that the target turns away from your aircraft to a tail aspect at launch. So it's right here, RTR. So if you're waiting till this, you're waiting way too long. You need to shoot earlier. This does not consider weaving. So the target can still dodge the missile in this zone but it's a really good shot if you're able to take it. And range minimum, this bottom line right here, this the missile might not even arm, so it'll probably pass them and it won't even won't even arm. So here we're going to talk about the pre-launch information. It's right here to the left of your DLZ, these three lines right here. This first line is the DMC or digital maneuvering queue and I'll go over that later. This next one 840 is the closing rate between you and your target. The 17M is the A pole meaning that the missile go active when you are 17 miles 17 miles away. This is your pre-launch information. So the missile that you have on the rail right now, if you were to shoot, you will be 17 miles away when that missile goes active. MPRF, also known as Pitbull. Sometimes, if you're close enough, sometimes too close, you will see a F here. It'll be 9F. That means you will be 9 miles away when the missile hits the target or when it's calculated to hit the target. That is F-pole. These countdowns are dynamic and can, can and will change based on target maneuvers. Here are the DMC, the Digital Maneuvering Queue. So what this means, it represents the heading change that a target has to make to degrade the AMRAM from high termination to nominal termination. Prior to RPI, DMC is not calculated, so above this line, when the, the target carrot is above this line, the DMC is not calculated. Once it gets below, then it's there. And it starts at 0. Then it goes to 10, and it goes in increments of 10. Once it reaches 180, that's basically turn and run. So that means if the target turns and runs, goes 180 degrees, you still have a good chance of hitting them. That's why it goes to 180 and then, dis then uh, disappears. A good shot is 60. That is a pretty decent shot to, to shoot at 60. But if it's, if it's your first encounter, a R pi or R op shot would be a good shot as well, especially if, you, if it's your first encounter. All right, next we're going to be talking about pole ranges. A pole is the active pole, so this is when the missile goes active. MPRF, pit bull. This is the range that your aircraft will be to the target when your missile goes pit bull. That's this, this right here, A pole. M pole is explained, but that's they, get, they, they merge M pole and A pole and kind of give it certain things, but... It's not accurate. So A-pole is the, is the distance that you will be from your target when the missile goes active. Down here, there'll be countdowns. This is your post. So after you shoot, you'll, be, you'll see stuff down here. F-pole, like I said before, if you see an M or F here, you'll, it'll be your F-pole, which will be the distance from your target when the missile is calculated to hit, which is be down here. So this is post-launch. Pre-launch, it'll be up here. Post-launch, it'll be right here. So after you shot, this is telling you that you will be 10 miles away when the missile is expected to hit the target and that time will be t meaning the target is the calculated time that it takes for the missile to hit so in six seconds the missile will hit but this can change based on the maneuvers so this is post launch this this information down here this is pre launch this is post launch after you shoot this will populate the time to hprf which is husky which is a so the a countdown is is what you're paying attention to until the the missile goes husky this m right here is how far you will be at Pitbull. Not Husky, but Pitbull over here. Once this countdown goes to zero, you will be Husky. It'll transition to an M. This means that it is 11 seconds till Pitbull, MPRF, and you will be 18 miles away when that happens. 
When this goes to zero, it'll turn into a T. Once it's a T, it is the impact, is the calculated impact count countdown when the missile is expected and calculated to hit the target. It doesn't mean that it hit, it just means that it has, it just means that based on calculations, it should hit at that time. And remember, all of these t countdowns can and will change based on target maneuvers. So that is it for this video. Make sure you subscribe for more. I will be making more of these in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, and I will try to answer all of them, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, I'm kind of excited about this one. This is our pre-recorded interview. I'm going to be playing in just a minute with Prime. I invited him to speak about some of the fundamentals of BMS multiplayer. He is the content creator known on YouTube as Aviation Plus. Let's go straight to the interview.